Hello everyone and welcome to the Business Research Cafe where knowledge is a piece of cake. This is your host Heba Maruf and our piece of cake today is research philosophy. First of all, I need to mention that this series of videos is mainly developed for all PhD students, but if you are a master's student, I hope you start learning about research philosophy as soon as you can. Today we are clarifying that you are not alone in the research philosophy maze and explaining why it's so important for you to learn about research philosophy. Well, I know what you thought when you heard me saying research philosophy and piece of cake in the same sentence. It looks unbelievable, right? We can say that research philosophy is like the biggest headache in all BHD students' head. Let's take a look at what usually happens for all of us. You probably finish your master's degree without knowing anything about research philosophy. Of course, you studied methodology, but you were mainly focused on methods and how you will use it in your research without paying too much attention to the philosophy behind these methods. But starting your PhD, you find out that research philosophy is not something that you can skip anymore. You start listening to your professors and older researchers talking about research philosophy. You hear them saying terminologies like paradigms, ontology, epistemology, positivism, interpretivism, etc. It's not even English, and you have no clue what does it mean. This is enough to get the impression that research philosophy is really hard. Trying to be optimistic, you get a book and start reading about research philosophy. Here, when you make sure it's really, really hard. Then you get four, five, or six books, and you find, finally feel that it's not only hard, but also confusing. Having this frustration, you may take the worst decision you can take in your career by skipping research philosophy. You say to yourself, okay, I will do my PhD exactly as I did my master's. Anyway, PhD is mainly about contribution, not philosophy, right? How do I know all that? Simply because it's exactly what happened to me. Not only me, but almost every PhD student I've ever met in my life, we all get this frustration that leads us at some point to say, just skip it. This all was in the past. Now, everything has changed for me. When I visited SOAS, University of London, one year ago, I met my co-supervisor, Professor Reinhard Bachmann. In our first meeting, we discussed my research in general in our second meeting, I was so ready to talk about literature review, the pilot study, or something like that. And, but instead, Professor Bachmann wanted me to start writing the first draft of my research philosophy chapter. Do you know what I thought then? Why? I had a very big why in my mind. I wanted to start with something easy, something makes me feel I did some progress at the beginning. Then I thought, okay, let's start with research philosophy. Let's do it properly before being so exhausted with the theoretical part and then not paying too much attention for it anymore. So I started learning about research philosophy and I got all kinds of confusion and frustration that you can imagine. I kept working for 15 days till I got the first draft of my research philosophy chapter. I felt some sense of achievement but I was sure I have a lot of gaps and hundreds of questions in my head. So I kept working for another two months. 80 days of working day and night. And what was the result? Wow, really wow. I have changed. I'm not the same researcher anymore. Everything has changed for me. The way I do read, evaluate research is completely different now. Now I knew the answer for my question, 
why. When you take this journey, exactly as I did, you will be able to position yourself on the global research philosophy map. Imagine there is a big map for all research of philosophy paradigms. You will be able to know who you are, where you are, and easily spot yourself on the, this map and say, here I am. Also, you know how you are related to everybody else. For me, this is perfectly clear now. I'm a pragmatic researcher. I do really believe in pragmatism and the notion of what works. And uh, don't worry about that. We will explain it later in uh, one of our future videos. But for now, I just needed to explain that I'm a pragmatic researcher. And second, every single decision of your PhD will be easily taken. In every step of your PhD, you will be faced with a lot of options and decisions to be made. Uh, as you have a clear research of philosophy in mind, everything will be cluster clear for you. Amazing, isn't it? But does it make it any easier? Okay. Let me tell you a couple of good news. First, you are not alone. In 2012, McKenzie and Akinbong studied the research of philosophy misconceptions from students' point of view in a research titled Research of Philosophy Debates and Classifications, Students' Dilemma. In this research, you will find out that almost all PhD students have problems with understanding research of philosophy. No matter what school or what field of research, we all have the same problems with it, okay? And second, let me put it this way. Is it really hard or it's only hard because the way it was presented? And the answer is, it's mainly the way it was presented. Maybe it's a little bit hard, but it's mainly because of the way it was presented. Quoting from McKinsey and Akinbong, a number of studies have used different descriptions, categorizations, and classifications of research paradigms and philosophies in relation to research methods with overlapping emphasis and meanings. Look at this, overlapping emphasis and meanings. This is why we all feel frustration and confusion when we read about research philosophy. There is a lot of disagreements and debates among research philosophy writers. They use different terminologies to refer to the same thing and use the same terminology in many different ways. For example, positivism and interpretivism. Are they paradigms or two stances for epistemology? Another example, do we still use the term paradigm or it's better to use worldly view? These arguments are your main source of frustration and confusion and Yet, I didn't even mention any real philosophical argument or debate. Why this is good news for you? I'll tell you why, because it's relieving news. Having a struggle getting research philosophy doesn't mean you are a bad researcher, didn't study enough, or not smart enough. It is just a common problem for all these students. And it's not even a problem anymore, because simply, Today we are starting a series of videos to clarify these misunderstandings and when you start your reading about research philosophy and writing down your own research philosophy chapter, everything will be different. So please keep calm and learn research philosophy. In our next video, we are going to cover a very important question. Where are we as business researchers? positioning business researchers on the global research philosophy map. It's really a very, very interesting topic. I hope, please, please, please don't miss it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you very, very much for watching. You're always welcome in the Business Research Cafe. See you soon. Bye-bye.